before and I saw so many straight people coming into these houses with the gay prostitutes and then going back to their homes with their, with their marriage and kids and pretending like everything goes on. So you understand that it's a dogged dog world and and this is going to be so deep. Like I had a lot of, um, please don't understand what I'm saying. I've had a lot of um, like gay, I mean straight girls come at me, right? It's easy for me to say, you know, I've got I've got swag. I'll get you, and then immediately we're confusing that straight girl because we think that we can get you, but then they're also using us because they think they have. It's such a deep thing. What I'm yeah. saying is that be careful of falling into something that you're not if you're not. Mm. Don't play with it because there are people, and also religion likes to say, we are going to take you. you, you're going straight to hell. Oh, no, once you're gay, yeah. you're going straight to hell. Once you're lesbian, you're going straight to hell. Okay, here, Jesus loves me. Why was I attracted to women? I'm still attracted to women, but yeah. I don't open that door. I'm married now, I've got kids, I don't open that door. It's my choice. But I still have that attraction. I just choose not to, okay? But there are people now that's playing a dangerous game because now let's say the innocent guy that's really gay and is really battling, really trying to discover themselves, this one with his selfishness that is, that, that is not gay is is going to fall for you. You're going to fall for him deep. And next thing he's going to his family and you're sitting here with a broken heart. And then, so that's what I saw as well in the streets where people who go home and be what they are not, but behind in that underworld, they do a lot of crazy things. Powerful people. Crazy things, yes. Important people. Important people. people. With, with names that are revered in society. Yes, that's what I saw. So it's really a doggy dog world there. It's, it's, it's just crazy. Yeah. You were arrested mm. in KZN in Durban. What were you mm. arrested for? I was arrested many times. I was arrested in Sunnyside. I was arrested in KZN. Um, I was, I'm not going to get into detail with what I did because it's going to give people ideas. I know some people tend to really go with like, okay, this is what I did. But remember I said I don't do prostitution. And I, I, I kind of like got what I wanted, but um, it took a lot of a gift of the gab. It took a lot of like conning to do. So the things that, that men got arrested for and were sentenced for long by using weapons and stuff like that, I did it without using weapons. But I'm not going to sit here and say what I did because I'm not proud of what I did. Yeah. But that was the reason for my arrest, yeah. If if there's nothing else with the 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 the, the street life and the thug life, I, I I I think it's important that we discuss your restoration and yes. how it began. Yeah. When did the restoration begin? Is there a particular person you can point out, for example, and say, it was in 2008 I bumped into C. Paul at Shoprite and he took me to church. Just take me through how that. You are very started. prophetic. You're a deep boy. <laughs> boy, you deep. Thank you. Like for real, yeah. you have a gift. So, um, so what happened? Yes, it was at my restoration was through my daughter. Okay. So I always had like serious boyfriends. Like I dated for long. You know, the only people that I'd like sort of like cheat on is like them girls, right? But I dated for a very long time, and I uh, remember I told you I left my boyfriend's house, who I'm now married to. Okay. okay. But I never thought that I have, I'd have a child out of wedlock. Okay. So when I was in them streets, I met a, a drug dealer. And I didn't even know he's a drug dealer. And I didn't even know he was younger than me either. Because he's tall and stuff like that, right? So I was getting high. And I was about, so I came out of this drug dealer's house and I saw this guy that came out, but he wasn't articulating like in a Nigerian accent or Tanzanian accent. He was articulating like, which was so weird too. He had like a South, Af South African accent. He's like, hey, do you remember me? And I was like, this Nika 
better know that I don't talk to any male figures. They better warn him. Maybe he's new in the blog. Mm -hmm. They better warn him that this girl doesn't talk to guys like that. She ain't like that. Mm -hmm. And then he carries on. Do you remember me? So I'm like, okay, maybe he could be from school. So I'm like, let me give this brother a chance. So I turn around and he's like, we caught a cab together two weeks ago. And I remembered, oh, yes, I did catch a cab with him when I was like, I, I, I slant a move. Slant a move is like when you took care of business, like the stuff that I don't want to get into. And then I was trying to run back to Sunnyside to get my drugs. And this guy was in the cab with me. And two weeks later, that's who I met out of the drug dealer's house. And then we try to have something going on there. And then a child came out of this, right? My first daughter. So then that's when... The restoration happened for me. Now, don't try and picture happy the party girl that had her own car, her own house. I was like my lullaby out. Mm. I was like my lullaby. I was like a thug, the streets. I was like, I didn't look the part, but I was the walking dead, Mm. right? And then here I am. My mom's like, okay. So I finally went back home after three years. And uh, my mom's like, let me take you back to the roots. Let me take you back to Zim. And then that's when I found God, came back. I was going to get a, a job as a um, air hostess, but then I was overweight and I wasn't feeling well. Then they, my mom took me and my sister f- took me to the hospital, found out that I was six months pregnant because I was tiny. I always weighed like 45. I was like a tiny girl, right? And I was like, but I haven't been with no nobody, no male guy. And I remember, oh, it's that brother that I sort of had a thing with. And, um, and, I promise you, that's why I believe in God the way. I had no money. I had no work. Now, you explain this to me. How does someone that comes from the streets, when I went to give birth to my to my daughter, I gave birth at a government hospital. Kopidor. The, the room that I gave birth in, they had renovated it, right? And then when I went home, there was boxes and boxes of pampers, like boxes of pampers and clothes and stuff like that. And I was just so surprised that like, okay, this can only be God, okay? Then move, then we moved to Santa Johannesburg. And then as my sister's like, okay, let me try and get a job for you. Then I got a job as a receptionist. I stopped drugs. I stopped alcohol immediately the minute that I found out that I was pregnant with my daughter. Okay. This job that I had was an office job. There's mm-hmm. no ways that I was going to have the job. It's just by God that because I don't have qualification. Oh, so. so I worked for the big corporate company for many, many years. There's a lot of things where I'm sitting here in shock and I'm like, it can only be God. Yeah. There was times, I mean, I traveled abroad, me and my daughter. By the way, the brother, when I said I was pregnant, he's like, uh, you know. Whatever. Yeah. N- not in that way. I was, I was a gangster chick so he doesn't know that i'm born again so he's still scared of like that girl that i was you know so people i know women would like to say oh but he left he left but you need to know the part that you played as well so 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 then um yeah this child just made me stop everything and then i got married to my uh my boyfriend that i grew up with and um the rest is just history but even till today i'm clean and I'm out of that lifestyle for 18 years now. And I cannot believe the stuff. Like, you, like I don't even have to have, like, because of COVID, I lost my job, that corporate job that I was telling you about. And this husband that I married about, it doesn't mean that, okay, you've been taken care of because of your husband. No. I've seen favor locate me in, like, a serious way. Come on. That's got nothing to do with my husband. Yes. Me and my child, how I got her, right? We sitting on a flight traveling to America on holiday, we go there every year. Like, how does that even happen? The lifestyle that I live, it's like blowing my mind. And I'm talking about material stuff, but, but I'm good. And it's always like being faithful to God. Hmm. There was a time that I wanted to go to America. Even when you're born again, there's still stuff that you go through. I was like, America, here we come. My sister lives there. I was like, we're going to party. But I stayed in the house like a party pooper. There's stuff that you have to do that you don't want to open windows to. Hmm. It's a struggle. You're like, okay, I'll sit here board and stuff like that. God will reveal how you can enjoy this heaven on earth. Yeah, yeah. You know, God will reveal that. Just... Just, I was like, no, happy in America, just go, go party, go. And I was like, no, 
I sat in there bored because I know myself. That's the thing. If you know what your weakness is, don't play with that, yeah, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. Just don't play with that. So, yes, the aftermath of it is beautiful, but there are still struggles, and especially as females. I'm just saying, just know where the danger's at. Yeah, yeah, I know yeah. when you go out there, it seems nice, you know? You know, like, I'll give you an example. Like, if you go to, to the gym, because I like going to the gym, I like working out, I'm a tomboy. So... I, I can like really work out with a guy and that's cool. But but I'm married now, right? So so and and as well, it's so important, brothers, I'm gonna say this. You have to love a woman like your sister. It has to be like a sister, vice versa. Like like you have to I I heal a lot of mascu a lot of men because I'm quite masculine. But I can't do that because somehow as if you come to someone with like a sisterly motive, right, and a brotherly motive, there's no door for, for catching feelings, Correct. right? We need to overcome that. We really, really need to overcome that. The one time I was looking at people, like this is where the human mind is gone now. Somebody was taking a film of this girl. You know, you'll see there's a lot of likes on, 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 on a production when people are talking about, oh, like girls are like, down talking themselves. People like that because they're being entertained. Mm -hmm. But but people won't think like, no man. But anyway, so this person was taking a form of this this girl like all like naked in public and stuff like that. Like how do you film that? That's where our mind has gone. Black brothers, you need to take care of your sisters. I know we come across as like being loose or whatever. Don't entertain that. Don't like just... I think that's what they need. They need that really pure, innocent, brotherly love because maybe they don't have a father figure. Fathers, stop trying to, like, mack these young girls. Like, we need to be examples, guys. We need to change our ways because if we're going to copy the Western life, we're going down quick. We're going down quick. We need those manners back. We need, we just need to be good people. Right now, we are being greedy, 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 and we're selling our souls, and it's going to be ugly. We need to get God back into our hearts. I know we're dabbling with a lot of spiritual stuff right now. It's getting really ugly, like alcohol consumption. People are just, it's just crazy. And people are not seeing it. They're thinking it's fun, you know. Like, don't be fooled by what's happening in the Western world. There's a lot of Americans coming here just because the guy's talking with swag and stuff like that. That guy's going to pimp you girls and you think it's okay. It's not. We come from a beautiful culture. We need to wake up. Like, I've lived that life. I'm not saying from judging. I'm just saying try and be who you are. You Zulu for a reason. You Twana for a reason. There's a reason. We've we've got a beautiful culture. You can't want to throw all of that away just to be wasting. Like you can balance it out. It's not the deep being like a child of God. It really isn't, you know. So that's where I'm at with this. <laughs> We're nearing the end of our conversation.